So welcome aboard this uh, aerobatics training flight or practice flight uh, from the 18th of December. My name is uh, Per, I'm a Danish pilot and uh, flying the RV7, which I have been doing for the last, uh, yeah, almost two years now. Uh, today's flight is basically to, to go out and, and practice some aerobatic maneuvers uh, and then later to refine them. I usually record most of my flights and to uh, to become better, uh, and, uh, I thought I wanted to share on one of those flights. It was also very ambitious with uh, three cameras, but just before, uh, yeah, after I finished the flight, I found out that one of my GoPros did not really work, so it would only be a, a two camera shot today. So I lined up on runway 29 at the Roskilde Airport, uh, a normal takeoff, uh, and I have gotten received the permission to go to uh, a uh, an aerobatics practice area, uh, and then when I get airborne, or just before I get airborne, I'm told that uh, it actually will be a different place that I will be doing my, my aerobatics practice. So uh, that's something you need to get used to, uh, that the plants are, are changing right away. Other than that, absolutely beautiful day, not so much interesting on, on the takeoff here, and, uh, and also on the flight to the aerobatics practice area. However, it was uh, immensely beautiful, uh, the state, uh, and uh, in, a, in a moment you'll see that I'm flying over the, the Roskilde Fjord, where uh, the, uh, the clouds are actually uh, mirroring in the, in the water, which was uh, crystal clear. So, magnificent flying day uh, here in uh, late October of 2023. Uh, so uh, normally uh, we are flying below 1500 feet, which is uncontrolled airspace around Copenhagen area. Uh, but in this time here, I well, this flight here, I, I asked for permission to uh, to go into the uh, terminal area of uh, Roskilde Airport uh, up to 3500 feet. And uh, this is what you're seeing right now. Right now ahead of me uh, you can see Holbeck Fjord uh, and the uh, Holbeck to the uh, left side of the fjord or the southern side of the fjord and then uh, a short turn uh, a little uh, around the cloud uh, that is uh, blocking uh, my, uh, my space and uh, the first thing I always do is to just do a little bit of uh, warm up uh, by just a couple of turns uh, to the right and then to the left, some, some G warm up, not more than maybe 2G, maybe one and a half, 2G, maybe sometimes a little bit more, just to uh, to get a little uh, yeah ready for the uh, for the maneuvers. Today, uh, basically, just doing some uh, maneuvers. There was a couple of them. Well, all of them I've done before, uh, but not all of them in the in the RV7. So uh, I just wanted to get them done. Uh, not get them done, but basically just do them and uh, and then always uh, work for the next flights for, for refining them and becoming even better and more precise. And the, the easy one here is basically an aileron roll, so quite simple, just uh, basically 10 degrees nose up and uh, then just uh, the stick to the other side. So then you will end up by 10 degrees nose down and that's uh, the north of your first simple. position and operate no further south than the, the southern tip of Ulrich. So here we go with the, the first half cube and eight and uh, my own comments to this one here is that the pull up was uh, actually quite good. I was uh, around the uh, 60 knots on the top. Uh, what I didn't do at this time here was really to, to stick to it, stick to the plan and uh, on the 45 degrees nose down, hold that line for maybe one or two seconds, then do the roll, hold that line for one or two seconds and then do it, do it again. The second one is, is basically the same, uh, the pull up is quite good and uh, then again not necessarily uh, 45 degrees nose down and the roll and holding the line and then the roll and then holding the line for the pull up a little bit uh, yeah, unclear on that one here. Third one uh, also the same uh, normal pull up and 
then trying to force myself to get to the 45 degrees nose down, hold a point on the ground, and then uh, for one or two seconds, then do the roll, hold the ground point again, and then roll up. A wing over, this was just, uh, let's say, a kind of a lazy turn, uh, a little more than 90 degrees, I can see. Uh, so nothing in particular with this one here. And then uh, the reversal uh, to the other side. Not uh, actually not close to uh, a lazy area. Leaving altitude. The barrel roll normally between uh, 40 60 degrees nose up and, and then do the roll slowly. Uh, normally, this is done in preparation for having someone on the wing uh, in a formation flight. Um, I have a tendency to get uh, the, la the last part of the roll a little bit fast, so this is why I'm trying to force myself not to do it so fast. With the, a very good pull up here, quite a slow roll, getting down to around 20 degrees nose down, slowly rolling and then level. So maybe a little more nose up next time, and just uh, for the sake of it, I may long roll again. Next time probably it will be pulling up a little bit more. So resetting for the reversal course now southbound and just do a normal loop. This is around the three and a half G uh, pull up, uh, a little pull on, on the top of it, but not three and a half G, and then pulling out again. So we're down to around 60 knots on the top. Now the first cubanate, so basically two half cubanates uh, in uh, yeah, right after the other. The roll comes a little bit fast again, now holding the line a little bit more, but not so uh, so straight, but that will be better next time. Straight into the next uh, half cubanate on the top. And here I hold the line a little bit longer, do the roll. This way I hold the line, this is quite good, so uh, now I have the, uh, the feeling that I, how I need to hold the line. And then we do a lazy aid, so more than 90 degrees uh, bank on the top. Follow it through. This requires some uh, hand and feet coordination. Again, more than 90 degrees, maybe 110 degrees on the top, and then reversal course back southbound. Setting up again for uh, the, uh, the highlight of the trip, which suddenly did not become the highlight. I was uh, going to do a hammerhead. Uh, hammerhead is, is not that difficult. I've been flying a lot in the Belanca uh, and doing these ones here, but this one here I really got screwed up. Uh, my entry speed was not uh, high enough and uh, secondly uh, my, uh, my pull up was also not good enough uh, and uh, I kicked in the pedal uh, too early. Uh, it fell through. Not really a stall, but not something conclusive. So basically, uh, everything I could do wrong on this uh, hammerhead, I think I did. So next time, that would be better. And uh, now I know how the aircraft responds, and I need to have more speed on, on the entry of this. So not that good, but uh, anyway, I wanted to share. And here we go with the second loop. This is the time where I'm beginning to get a little bit tired, and uh, you can see it's not very straight. It's more like a spiral. Uh, coming on the top, uh, not wings level, so not that uh, brilliant. Uh, that's why where I could start feeling the, uh, let's say, the, the tightness from, from these maneuvers. And then just one more half to the eight. And wings are not even level at the top any longer, so, and then I don't go 45 degrees nose down, hold the line and then go hold the line, so not really uh, impressive.
so all in all, a, a, a good workout, so to speak. Um, pretty happy with uh, what uh, I accomplished today. Not all of it was, was equally precise, so uh, but that, that's the way it is. Now I'm going into some slow flight. I, I did some uh, calibration of the uh, of the AOA for it to start giving me some audio, audio uh, uh, warnings uh, quite early, and this is what you will be hearing now in the in the headset. More beeps in the spectrum. And again, working a little bit, keeping the. Uh, the aspect pretty low, the angle of attack pretty high, and just listening to the differences in the, the frequency of the, the beeps. Then doing a small sightseeing flight uh, over Hunestel, uh, flying into the, uh, to the uh, yeah, sunset, which was really, really, really beautiful. Uh, Day and also uh, practicing a little bit something I wanted to try uh, doing a 30 degrees bank but then hold the, uh, the heading uh, uh, which did not go so well uh, something I need to practice a little bit more I think that in order for me to accomplish this I need to have to know why instead but now I'm just uh, yeah, going around the Hunsdal Harbor you can see that to the left, just in front of me, the, uh, the ferry to, to Hunestel. Absolutely beautiful day, no wind uh, in October. Uh, actually, the day before, uh, a terrible storm, a hundred year storm, is, uh, is hitting Denmark. It is what it is, but uh, I can always uh, cherish this, these beautiful days. practicing the, uh, the bank and holding the line. I, I tried to put in some, uh, some, 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 some rudder on this one here that did not go too well. And then uh, a couple more uh, practices for uh, trying to hold the, the heading while I'm in the bank. Again, uh, you never learn if you never try it. So uh, you can see that I'm actually turning while I'm holding the bank did not go too well, so next time I have an idea, pull the nose up a little bit more, maybe 10 degrees high, pull in the bank and then just uh, push it down a little bit with the, uh, uh, with the stick. And then doing the other side as well, did not go too well either, so a little more practice. So it's not that I cannot fly in a straight line, it was basically just uh, practicing. Now returning to, to Rolski, the airport for landing, I was number four for landing, a couple more aircraft in front of me, uh, actually just straight into the sun, which made them uh, quite difficult to, uh, to detect. Uh, turning on a, on a long final, and uh, I knew that I had two aircraft in front of me at that time, uh, and I really couldn't see where one of them was, so uh, in order for me to stay a little bit safe, um, although I rolled out on the center line or the extended center line, I decided to go a little bit left to the center line uh, in case I would uh, uh, get closer to the to the aircraft in front of me. And uh, there was a small conversation uh, between me and the tower on where the other aircraft was, and it was really really difficult to see. I can also see that there are some uh, color gradings and, and the difference of the cameras that I'm using. So something I need to get better and ad adjusting. Uh, well, I'm always learning. I'm using DaVinci Resolve to, to edit my videos. And uh, yeah, I can see that the colors uh, need to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, just before uh, touchdown here, you will actually hear the AOA uh, start making a noise, which is really good that it's doing it at that time.
anyway, uh, thank you for watching this video. I know it's a little bit long. I hope that uh, that it's valuable to everyone. Uh, I have around 800 hours now and uh, really want to, to learn all the time yeah, yeah, and become a better pilot, and, uh, uh, pushing myself. Otherwise, it would just be going around the, uh, yeah, the garden, so to speak, uh, every single time. But uh, if you like my videos, uh, like them and, uh, and subscribe to my channel and I'll, I'll promise to p uh, publish even more and make some videos and be even more ambitious with, uh, with more camera angles at the same time. So thank you.